Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. May the 4th be with you. Yes, I'm recording this video on May the 4th. I wasn't intending to actually record a video today. I had another video lined up. And then I looked at what happened on the ASX. And one of the companies that did pretty well today was Electro Optic Systems. Share price up over 12% on no news. In fact, share price of this company has now risen three days in a row on a pretty high volume. So there is a potential the share price of Electro Optic Systems is breaking out. And that will become obvious when we look at the next slide, which is the chart. So usually I leave the chart to the end of the video, but today we're going to look at the short-term chart for this company. Now, last time I did a video on Electro Optic System was probably about 18 months ago. This is a company I've held for a long time. I'm talking about eight years or so. Now, to be fair with myself, even though the share price has fallen from $10 uh, just before COVID-19 all the way down to uh, lower than $1, I did take profits when the share price got above $9 and I used those profits to pay off my mortgage. And I just decided because I had no idea which way the share price would go, even though the market at the time was about $1 billion, I thought I still need to take or hold some shares in this company because I was excited about the potential future of this company. Now, my excitement has waned away over the last few years because this company has experienced some significant headwinds. However, new management has come in. I've listened to the new management and I am hopeful that the new management have the potential to turn things around for electro optic systems. And it seems like maybe the market is thinking just like me, just based off the share price and volume action we have seen in the last few trading days. So this is the electro optics short term chart going back daily chart going back to July last year. So about what's July? So July, May, we're talking about 10 months of trading. Share price of electro optics system was in a well defined downtrend uh, up until around about August, September. In fact, August would be around about the time they released their half year results and the share price dived all the way down to about 45 cents. But you can see around about 45 cents, maybe you can't see it. Now there, I just put in this horizontal a dash line. It's not perfectly horizontal because uh, sometimes I cannot draw straight lines, but that seems to be the floor for electro optic systems. And when the share price gets down to that level, uh, seems like the share price will rally and the last time it did it was actually in March this year. So not that long ago, share price actually got down to about 43 cents. And then the company released a couple of really interesting announcements in April. We'll talk about that later in the video. And that's why the share price has really popped up. In fact, the share price has almost doubled since that low in March. And then for some reason, over the last three trading days, so we're talking about the second, third, and fourth of May, the share price has really taken off. In fact, it's taken off or risen from about 60 cents up to a current share price of 83 cents on no news. The company has not released any news flow this week. They did release their appendix 4C on April the 28th, and there was sort of a muted reaction from the market upon the release of that appendix 4C. So there could be potential that is this is just a delayed reaction from the market. The other thing to note is we have seen pretty good volume over the last three trading days, about 2 million shares uh, on each day. So when you get 2 million shares traded on each day over three consecutive days, that is fairly significant for this company, particularly when you look at the history. We haven't seen this sort of trading going on in this company for a period of time. In fact, the last time it happened was in January of this year, uh, slightly lower volume. And that's the last time we saw a potential breakout. Now, I think this potential breakout has more chance of success because that potential breakout in January of last year, it was moving into a high or you know fairly strong resistance level. Uh, and the reason that's a strong resistance level is because the previous high to that was only about four months from that date, which was August of the previous year. The high now, or well, the previous high, last time the share price was 83 cents was actually way back in August. So we're talking about a nine month high in electro optic system. And the reason that's important is because we don't have as many 
shareholders who had bought in at much higher prices right out on the registry because a lot of those shareholders probably would have sold out that last time we saw the share price try to break out in a general REIT. So there's less resistance right now for electorate optic systems. And that's why the share price has run up three days in a row with not much selling. Now, that does not mean we won't see selling coming in because I think still think there's going to be some sellers, some shareholders who want to sell out because the share price has ridden a significant amount in a few days. But this rise in share price is coinciding with a really good April for the company in terms of a couple of really big contracts they have signed. And I'll talk about that. I think I've already mentioned that. No, those contracts. And I'll talk about those contracts later in the video. Now into what this company does, for those who don't know. Now, last time I did a video, they had three divisions or segments, uh, space, defense, and communications. Now they only have two because the new management have decided to wind down their space link. And uh, one of the reasons I was a little bit excited about this company was space link. But I think that was a prudent decision by current management because this company was burning through a lot of cash. Even though they've had pretty high and lumpy revenue or cash receipts, uh, they were burning through a lot of cash. So we'll go through some of the structural uh, changes this company have made either in the next slide or two slides from now. And I think uh, what the company and what the management is doing right now is on the right path to turning electric optic systems around. So currently they do have two, they do have, they have two different segments or divisions, space systems and defense systems. In the space systems, we're talking about space surveillance, intelligence services, space control and warfare capabilities, state-of-the-art optical and satellite communications products, and in the defense systems, remote weapon systems, high specification vehicle turrets, high energy laser systems, and the next gen counter un uncrewed aerial systems. So they're talking about drones and that sort of thing. 2022 could be a fairly significant, important year for electro optic systems as management tries to turn things around. And some of the things they've decided during their restructure program is reducing costs, increase efficiencies, create sustainable growth opportunities. And they made significant board and management changes, including a new CEO and new directors, concentrating on fiscal discipline, something I like to see because of many tech companies in the world are going through this right now. So in a very low interest rate environment, it's all about revenue growth. People don't, didn't, the market didn't really care about profitability, but things have changed a little bit. And now the market is only caring about profitability. And if you are burning through a lot of cash, more than likely your share price has share price has been significantly hit. And that's why a lot of these tech companies are undergoing some fiscal discipline, reducing um, staffing and those sort of thing. And the other thing electro optic systems have decided to do is to concentrate on their core products, which is one of the reasons why they decided to unwind Space Link. The current CEO of EOS is Dr. Andreas Schwerb. He was appointed as the CEO in August 2022. So he's been in this role for nine months now. And I think, in my opinion, we're already seeing the effects of his leadership on this company. Maybe that's another reason why the market is getting a little bit excited about this company, because I think they like where this heading, where this company is heading and where Dr. Andreas Schwerb is taking this company. He has a very career in the defense manufacturing and space domains. He spent time working with the German defense company Rhein Metal AG, the US global equipment manufacturer Mantelwok Company, Airbus Group, and the European Space Agency. He was also the president of EOS EMA EA, which is Europe, Middle East, and Africa, for two years. So he does have an understanding of the company's global operations. And he also holds a PhD in the field of system modeling and numerical optimization. Now let's have a look at a few facts in regards to EOS. The company founded in 1983. So we're talking about a 40 year anniversary for the company this very year. Listed on the ASX back in 2002 via uh, growth property investments. So it looks like this 
probably a backdoor listing, that sort of thing. Now, the major shareholder in EOS is WH Salt Patterson. They own between about 8 and 10%. I did see one website suggesting they own 10% of the company. Another website suggesting they only own 8 They also own a little bit of debt when it comes to electro-optic systems. And I'll talk about their debt later in the video. Last time I did a video on EOS was back in October 2021. The markup at that point in time was $388 million. Share price, $2.57. Current markup of EOS is 142 million. That's at a share price of 83 cents. Now, since I am recording this video before trading on May the 5th, I'm more likely going to going to be releasing this video uh, after trading has finished on May the 5th. I could envisage the share price being anything between about 90 cents and 70 cents, just because we have seen a massive run in the share price over the last three trading days. So make sure you have a look at the what the share price is right now whenever you are watching this video and the ticker code for this company would it be anything else other than eos april was a good month for eos particularly in regards to these two announcements one on the 3rd of april and the second one on the 26th of april in regards to a conditional contract to supply remote weapon systems to ukraine now, the first announcement was valued at approximately $120 million Australian dollars. Uh, and that's, I think, was a maximum. And the second contract was for approximately $61 million Australian dollars. Uh, the market did get a little bit excited, particularly around the first contract. And after they announced that first contract, share price did pop up and then the share price went sideways. So some of the return in positive sentiment around this company is because of these two contracts particularly the first one, released on the 3rd of April, 2023. Even though EOS had a pretty bullish April in regards to those two contracts, they also released another uh, announcement on the 17th of April, something to do with um, a trading update or operations update, something like that. But within the announcement, there was a really interesting passage. And what this passage was suggesting that there is still a lot of uncertainty and risk when it comes to this company, particularly with their covenants, particularly with their borrowings. And as I said before, I'm going to talk about their borrowings later in the video because they still have a lot of debt. So I'll just talk about this uh, statement right now. Notwithstanding the increased uh, 31st of March 2023 cash balance, and as noted in the financial statements for the year ended 31st of December 2022, the group is required to comply with borrowing covenants related to cash inflows calculated on a rolling three-month basis. If adequate, cash inflows are not received, including in any of April, May, or June 2023, the group may breach borrowing covenants and or may not have sufficient liquidity and funds to continue operations. So hopefully those people who are buying into EOS right now understand there's still some uncertainty and some risk when it comes to electro-optic systems. And then, in saying that, later in the month, the company did release the March quarter results. And this was a good quarter when you look at the operating cash flow. So it says the customers $62.1 million, and the company was operating cash flow positive by almost $30 million. And the cash on hand actually increased from $21.7 million to $45.5 million. So you might be thinking, what an absolutely stellar quarter this company had. And again, what the company did in their commentary was sort of put a lid on that excitement. Well, they should have put a lid on that excitement. And I really love when a management of a company are transparent and honest when it comes to the performance of the company. So let's have a look at what the company said in the commentary in regards to these March quarter results. So this was a section titled Impact of Contract Asset Balance. And on the third point here, they actually mention that the decrease, so I'll just go through the whole passage. Uh, EOS had received payments in advance from customers totaling approximately $24 million. So again, received payments in advance, about $24 million. That's very important. The net contract asset after deducting payments received in advance of 116 million at 31st of March 2023 was $26 million lower than it was at 31st of December 2022. 
this decrease was a key cause of the positive operating cash flow during the quarter ended 31st of March 2023. So even though the cash flow statement looks really good, this company was operating cash flow positive, about $30 million, there was a key reason for that, as the company highlighted in that third point. One of my favorite parts of the Appendix 4C or 5B is Section 7, Financing Facilities, because we can see in this section how much debt a company has and the particulars of that debt. And right now, or at the end of the March quarter, 2023, EOS had $147.8 million of used financing facilities. So that is their debt. They also had $342,000 of unused financing facilities. So remember in that April 17th announcement, they mentioned that if they have any cash inflow problems, they wouldn't have the liquidity and funds to continue operations. The main reason behind that is because of the very low unused financing facilities, which is 342,000. So if they need any more working capital, they'd have to go and either raise capital or ask uh, WH Sol Patterson or someone else for more financing facilities or more loans. And down the bottom uh, in, seven, in section 7.6, we have the particulars of their financing facilities. One of their financing facilities is with WH Sol Patterson. That totals about $73 million. And there's another one down the bottom as well with Export Finance Australia. So this company has a lot of debt. And this is the main problem I have right now with electric electric electro optics systems maybe if i say the name again electro optic systems uh, sometimes i can't say the names of anyone sometimes i can't even say my own name now to the receipts history so this is something i always look at for companies that release their appendix 4c 5b and for companies that don't i always look at revenue history for those companies and what i want to see in all companies no matter where they are australia America, Germany, Japan, uh, Djibouti, is I want to see receipts or revenue growing through time. There are reasons behind that, which I won't discuss in this video. And generally for electro-optic systems, receipts have been growing through time, particularly since 2018. But you'll notice there's a lot of lumpiness, and this is why having financing facilities is very important because some quarters they will have negative um, cash flow and they will need that financing facilities for their working capital. So that is one concern moving forward is whether they'll need cash flow in the next few months, as I mentioned in that April 17th announcement. And I think that concern could keep on going through the rest of 2023, possibly even into 2024. Now to the longer chart for electro-optic systems. This goes back to about July 2018 because the main appreciation in this company's share price, the only time we have seen a significant uptrend in the share price was 2019, sort of like a one-year period when the share price went from $2.50 all the way to a high of about $11. And that high in the share price was January 2020, just before COVID-19. I did take significant profits when the share price got to about $9, that would have been sort of late, either either really late 2019 or early 2020. And I thought I had made a mistake because the share price kept on going higher, but there was a reason I took profits then. I maintained a small position in this company and that size of that position is really low. So even though I am a shareholder of this company, I will always be profitable when it comes to this company, unless I add significantly to my position and then the company goes bankrupt. And I don't think I'm going to do that. But you can see towards the end of this period how the share price is just going sideways over the past, or well, say, nine months or so with the low in the share price around about, was it 45, 42 to 45 cents? So it does seem like right now we are in a period of consolidation with electro optic systems. But with the share price action over the last three days, potentially we are starting to see a little bit more excitement when it comes to this company. So maybe, definitely, maybe, or maybe not quite so definitely, the low in electro, electro optic system share price has been reached. And that low is around about 42 cents. That's all I have for this video, looking at electro optic systems. Talking about the May 2023 breakout. 
I probably would prefer a little bit of confirmation. I would like to see the share price remain above 80 cents uh, for this uh, breakout to be confirmed, because if we do see a lot of selling and the share price falls back, let's say 60 cents or so, this breakout would have failed. So I want confirmation to really confirm this was a breakout. If you have any questions about electro optic systems or if you completely hate this company because you've been a shareholder for the last three years, if you bought $11 and are still a shareholder, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this company. So leave your thoughts, your questions in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.